Around a million people a year visit this part of Scotland, many hoping to get a glimpse of the monster. Some search for a lifetime in vain. But Val Moffat had only been living on the loch for a year when, just like the Mackays, she spotted something from the road. I was driving up the hill. I'd come back from Inverness. I looked across the bay. And I saw this dark lump in the water, sort of slate gray colors, shiny from the water that was all over it. It looked like a boat that had turned upside down. And I thought, well, what's that? Crikey, it's got to be the monster. I would have loved to have pulled in and watched it, but there was traffic close behind me. It was impossible to stop. I glanced maybe three, four times. And the final time it was gone. So how did you know that this thing was alive? It was a completely different size to the waves, and it was still, it wasn't moving like the waves do. I've never seen a wave as big as it. There was a lady who lived around the corner, and she had seen it 13 times, and she saw exactly the same as I did. Right, that's interesting. So the, the sort of stereotypical picture that we all have of many loops or a body and then a neck, the actual people who've who live here and who've seen something, it's all, it's not like that. It's more like an upturned boat hull. Yes, definitely. I think it's just something with a solid body. Val is very clear that what she saw was the monster, and she also knows other people who've seen it. And what they saw was the same thing, which very definitely wasn't this multi-humped sea serpent that is the common depiction of the monster. I'm on the edge of the Arctic in Iceland, the far-flung outpost of the Viking seafaring kingdom. I'm hunting for a cold water predator that could have inspired the legend of the Loch Ness Monster. Now, I've had a tip-off about a centuries-old water monster that was filmed in a glacial lake last spring. The thing that really strikes me about this lake is just how similar it looks to Loch Ness. It's very long, but comparatively quite narrow, and clearly in places it's very deep. The big difference, though, is the water. This lake is fed by water that flows down directly from a glacier, which is still grinding rocks to dust. These waters are permanently clouded by sediment. Loch Ness, the visibility is pretty poor, but here it's almost non-existent. You wouldn't see anything at all in this water unless it was breaking the surface. But that's exactly what happened last spring. A stunned farmer saw ancient legend turn into living reality when he looked out of his kitchen window. I meet Icelander Hjörta Kjerov to find out exactly what emerged from these murky waters. So he's in the kitchen, right here, making his morning cup of coffee, looking out the window, saw something, at first didn't really register it, but then noticed that there was something strange in the water and uh, went to get his camera. Hjörta captured the first video footage of a creature long described as the Leierflut worm in the melting lake ice of spring. And this was just outside here. The position of it was literally just a matter of yards, 10 or 15 yards away from the bank down here. He said it was moving like a snake. It appeared to be going slightly against the current. So how long was it there for? How long did you watch it for? It was there for a long time. He watched it for, for several minutes. He started here, and then he went outside. And eventually, he just went off because he had work to do. When eventually he got back, it was dark. The next day, it had gone. I'm told of a more recent fatal attack that the whole community agrees is the work of the water mama. 
The victim's widow lives in a village upstream. If I can track her down, perhaps she'll be able to give me some clues about the identity of her husband's attacker. News of my arrival travels fast through the small community. So by the time I get to the widow's house, she's waiting for me and ready to talk. Can you tell me what happened to your husband? My husband was lost. I think he was disappeared going, by going up the river. He'd made this journey many times before. I was waiting for him. I spent one day, next day, nobody. They found the boat now, somewhere down the river. Inside the boat, was an eerie reminder of her husband, the clothes he was wearing when he left. His jersey was right on the, in the boat. The pants was well folded and his fishing line, everything was right there. Everything except a body. But the cast off clothes tell me that whatever took him didn't pull him from his boat. It waited until he was in the water before it struck. His grieving widow has no doubt about what did it. I believe that what mama has took him away. Some one of them more missed than carry here. What does the water mama look like? They are people. And they have like a fish tail. And they have long hair. And what color? White people, white people skin. But with no actual witnesses, I need to rule out any other possible explanations. No sign of any fight? Mm. No. no. He gone so peacefully. The pants just nice pull it up or no, like, blood or no, that not, not a sign. So what's the water like there? Is it, is it rough? Is it deep? No. There's no way you could say he drowned or he got deep water. So it, the, the water was very sharp. I need to piece together the evidence I've heard to figure out how this man met his untimely end. Very puzzling indeed, this particular disappearance. A canoe floating down the river with nobody in it, but this pile of clothes. No sign of any scuffle, any disturbance, which seems to rule out foul play. Um, the water there, um, shallow, calm, which seems to rule out drowning. My guess is that he probably took off his clothes to get in the water just to cool off, but what happened then?